Hi, you puddins. My name is Shadai Page, also known as What Page Is It? And today I'm going to give my February wrap up of all the books that I have both read and purchased. So let's get started. February was actually a pretty busy reading month for me, as you can see. Well, actually, it was more so both buying and reading. I, in the beginning of February, was a little bit slow, hesitant, to start off reading. I don't know. I was in a fog. But anyways, so let's go ahead and show you what I actually read this month. I mostly stuck to reading volumes this month, but I did read one single issue, and that was, you know, it's my favorite, crossover issue four. This, let me tell you, this is definitely good. I highly recommend crossover. You can watch my reviews here that I have for you guys on my comics and coffee segment, so be sure to check that out. First of the series that I read was actually Lock and Key. Now, I first started out getting introduced to Lock and Key by the new Netflix show that happened, I think, two, a year and a half, year ago, year and a half ago. And I was obsessed with it then, but a friend of mine said, no, 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 you need to read the comic books. It's way better. So I requested for Christmas slash my birthday for these lovely books and my mom delivered. So I actually read these, believe it or not, once later all within a four day week. Like within four days, I read these. I was reading about one and a half a day. I couldn't put it down. I was hook, line, and sinkered. I'm just obsessed with Lock and Key so much. I think Bodhi might be my favorite character. I love that kid so much. Next, I have The Paybacks. This I actually read because with crossover, it's some of the main characters within it. So I definitely recommend if you want to know and understand what's happening in Crossover, definitely read the paybacks because these characters are some of the main characters within it. This was very different, very gory, very... It was like kind of mystery too on like who's who and stuff like this. But in their premise as to why they are basically are hitmen who have to pay their debt for being superheroes, which is honestly, it's, it's a pretty cool read. So I definitely recommend it as his own, even without needing to read crossover, but you know. Next, my new favorite. Oh, I love when I find a series that I become absolutely obsessed with, the authors that create these stories, and then the artists that bring it to life. I give you Farmhand. Now I know this has been around for a minute, but this is new to me and I am heavily excited about this. And I found out just by Googling on the author's website, which the author is Rob Glory. And I was checking out his website because I wanted to know more about him, who is a black author and is also the artist of this book. He wrote and illustrated this book. Sir, I bow down. You go, dude. And I'm just, this. Oh, I felt it was very representative because I mixed and a lot of the fam the main family's kids are biracial like me. So I felt like I connect that way because one of the main characters is dad's, the, the father is black and the mother is white. So you got the mixed babies that look like me. So having the diversity within the family households and within the characters, I absolutely loved it. And so I picked up, actually I had one and two for a while. And then I went to Vinyl Fantasy because after going through all the comic book shops within basically the city in Brooklyn, they were the only ones that had Volume 3, which beyond excited and thankful for. Because I didn't feel like ordering online. I wanted to get my money to a shop. That was my goal that day. Now, for some books that I bought for this month, I do plan on reading for March. I have a lovely fun pile. Some of them I actually thrifted and some of them that I bought at different comic shops just from browsing around Brooklyn, which I did film uh, visiting six comic book shops in Brooklyn all in one day, except I have to add one more because a new place is opening up. So once that's filmed, then I'll have it ready for you guys. I stopped by Anyone Comics and I ended up picking up The Access Guide to the Black Comic Book Community 2020 through 2021. I have been Googling since last year, like different creators in the comic book community who are black and both being writers and artists and I wanted to read more comics. Now I was finding more comic books that were geared towards more like, you know, like understanding black history, understanding, you know, like social um social injustices, which is great. But I also wanted more like creative out there stories and this is literally the Google home of what you need in a book. These three men created this amazing book that showcases tons and tons of creators within the comic community 
Um, and some of them, actually some of the books that I even picked up recently are in this book. I got to meet Demetrios. He's actually the owner of Anyone Comics in Brooklyn. And I've met Joseph before in some like comic book meetups I did pre-pandemic. The books that they share in here really are what I was personally needing to find for my own collection to have and read. Next, I have Strange Academy, The Whole Trade. I was reading the single issues, but then I fell behind and I didn't remember what I had when new issues kept coming out, so I just waited and got the trade, so I'm very excited to read this from beginning to end completely. Next, I got this month's top favorite, I think, comic. This one was pretty poppin', is The Last Ronin Issue 2. I had to ask for favors for this to be held because I did not believe that it would be available by the time I got to the shops. But thankfully I was able to grab it and I'm super excited to read it and I can do this for a comic and coffee segment for you guys. Next I got Marvel Voices. I picked up both the number one of it because I didn't realize that this came out because I have the indigenous voices already and I ended up also getting voice Marvel Voices Legacy number one. I chose this cover because I thought it was really cool. I have Black Panther. No, my light died! I chose this cover because these are some of my favorite characters that are on it, especially having Black Panther. So I know there's some top favorite covers, that variant covers for this, but this is the one that I tickled my fancy. Next, I have Aquaman number two from Future State. I have not read the first one yet, but I've heard good reviews by asking you guys on my Instagram on your favorite Future State issues, and I heard this was definitely one of the top ones to check out. Oh, hiding in the pile is Aquaman number one too. Also from Future State, I picked up both, oh my god, Wonder Woman 1 and Superman Wonder Woman 1. I get so confused by these title names that I have to like, I think I read these like three times each to make sure they were both different in what I wanted. Wild. Another personal favorite of mine, I picked up Homesick Pilots. I've also done a review on this so for the first two issues, so be sure to check those out as well. Next, I got Truth and Justice, Vic Vixens Against the Code. This is actually also within the Black Comics book that I shared. This was listed in that, so I'm super excited to check this out and see what the storyline is as well. Next, I went to Bulletproof Comics in Brooklyn, and I was checking out the shop, and one of the people there recommended that I check out this comic book. It is Excellence, and it's by, where'd it go? Brandon Thomas. Kari Randolph and Emilio Lopez. This is made by three black creatives, which I'm super excited to start reading. I saw they have a Kickstarter going on. I heard it's about to be a TV series. So this I heard is a big deal to start reading. So I definitely want to catch up and see what the hype is about. Next, I went to a thrift shop and I ended up picking up some fun thrift finds. I picked up, I don't think I'm going to actually read through them or skim them, but I got both the official Handbook of the Marvel Universe. I grabbed volume 7 and then volume 10. These were the only two they had there. I could start digging more in there, but it was kind of a mess because that's thrift shops for you. You gotta dig to find the gold. But I was super excited to find these two there. They have some awesome illustrations in here. Um, you know, the very old school style, which I do love and adore. And some of the characters I have never seen or heard from before. So I'm excited to check this out on my downtime. Another thrift find I found was actually Hawkeye, Little Hits, and My Life as a Weapon. So I got both volumes one and two, and the reason why I grabbed these is because Disney Plus is going to have Hawkeye shown on their platform, and the fun part was they actually filmed one of the scenes right next to me. I'm super excited to read this and watch the show since I think the show is based off of this storyline. More comic books by more black creators. If you couldn't tell, I was very heavily invested on trying to find books made by black creators for Black History Month, which it was obviously a little bit hard to figure out what I wanted, but by going to the various shops and asking questions, I was able to find what I needed. So, at Maytel Comics, I picked up Bitter Root. I heard this was a phenomenal storyline. It's about a family of monster hunters. Just based off of that title, it'll make you think of Supernatural, but black, which... I'm here for. But I can't wait to start this one as well in March. The last two books that I picked up this month was The Other History of DC Universe. The I got both 
book one and book two. I'm super excited to read this. The covers on these are amazing. And I like how it kind of gives you a peek on the mentality I think that's gonna happen or the mind frame of the books. On the back of book one, it says, I could have told Lynn how I spent my nights. My body is wired with an electrical charge I can barely control. The most times I don't want to control because the only satisfaction I get is from beating down books. And the reason I have to hide my identity is because I already got one of my students lynched. As a wife, how would that make her feel? What does that kind of brutal honesty do to a marriage? I think it pretty much destroys it. On the back of book number two, it goes, when you want to be somebody, does being around Robin and Kid Flash and Wonder Girl and all of them make you feel like you're less than somebody? Mal, he didn't have a code name. He didn't have powers. He was just Mal, the black friend. That's got to bring you down more than it lifts you up. I'm not saying the Titans were trying to make him feel bad on purpose. I'm just telling you how it was. Another quote, with or without each other, they were still Batman's sidekicks and Green Arrow's protege. Without them, I wasn't anything, and that was hard to take. The first time I realized the only thing worse than being the Teen Titans mascot was being nothing. So these two stories definitely give a inside to being black and a superhero, which I'm super hyped to see the storyline play out. So these are all the books that I both purchased and read for the month of February. I personally wanted to have these to be more heavy on black creators because it was Black History Month. And weirdly enough, only one shop, I'm not gonna name names, had only their own black history wall of black authors, black creators. And I was just like, why only one? Some places had certain sections for representation, but not just specific for Black History Month. Is that something you guys want to see more of in the future, or is that just... I don't understand. Anyways, this is my February wrap-up for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye! Woo!